Today, we're going to react to some grad school memes. Let's go. Scientists, the coronavirus is transmitted via human interaction. Grad students. <laughs> Maybe some grad students isolate themselves because they're so busy, but uh, fortunately, I didn't have to. I actually spent a lot of time hanging out with my classmates, and it was really fun. Graduate school. What my friends think I do. Okay. What my teachers do. What society thinks I do. What my classmates think I do. What I think I do. What I really do. Yep. That's true. That There is a lot of frustration in grad school. Okay. A lot of it. You're going to be challenged academically because everyone around you is smart, right? And all your professors are smart. And oftentimes you feel like you're not good enough. Okay. Very true. Me after getting my first article published and sharing it with everyone I know. I too am extraordinarily humble. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty normal to kind of share your first publication, you know, because you're, pr you're proud of it, you know, but you, you don't want to act arrogant. And so you kind of humble brag, you know, I am a graduate student. I like to go to coffee shops to think about research methodology. Sounds like a good day to me. Me after writing one largely unusable paragraph. <laughs> That's true. Writing is hard, okay? And writing a, a good paragraph for a paper is even harder, right? So, hey, you deserve that break. Starting a PhD. Finishing a PhD. <laughs> very true. It is a very long journey, okay? Depending on what kind of, what kind of program you're in. I mean, it could take at least six years to finish a PhD, okay? So maybe you started with you know, no white or gray hair is, you know, but towards the end of it, you know, they, they start coming in and up here and, you know, right here. This was true of me. Getting a PhD is basically just constantly worrying you're wrong while convincing others you're not. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that you learn when you're in grad school is that you don't know as much as you would like to know. Because people around you are so smart and your professors are so smart, it, it's a humbling experience. But at the same time, you're presenting papers at conferences, right? You're making points in class. You're trying to publish papers. And when you're engaging in those activities, you're trying to convince others that you actually do know what you're talking about. So it's an interesting balance. I can't concentrate on this work until I've had a break. I can't enjoy this break until I finish my work. <laughs> that is a conundrum and it is true. Uh, sometimes, you know, I'm in, in the middle of a paper and I just can't work anymore. You know, I just like have to take a break. But then when I'm taking a break, I keep thinking about my paper, right? And I keep thinking about how to improve my paper. And it kind of ruins the break for me. Your novel research idea. Some guy in the 1980s. That is so true, okay? Because think, think about this. The point of publishing a paper is to come up with new ideas. Right? You're trying to make a contribution to the field, but you can't do that if somebody else made the same argument. Right? Now, for this meme, if it were for philosophy, I think I would have I would change the date, you know. I would say, you know, some guy in the, you know, 125 AD or something like that. You know, like a long time ago. When you spend years working on study only to become at all. I like this one. It's not as applicable to philosophy because philosophers generally don't co-author their papers. I know it's very common in the in the STEM fields, especially in the sciences, for there to be very, very many co-authors. How to stop stressing about tasks. Complete the tasks. <laughs> it's hard. You have a lot of to-dos, right, on your list when you're in grad school. You gotta edit this paper, you gotta edit that paper, right? And a lot of grad students also teach as part of their program. Right, so then they have to grade, and that takes a lot of time. We must do the revisions, but we hates it. Yes, I totally agree, and I think anybody who has ever published anything can relate to this, okay? So one of the things that you get sometimes after you submit a paper to a journal is called revise and resubmit, right? So basically, the journal says, you know, we're going to accept this paper as long as you make these revisions, right? So it's, it's good news, right? So you're, you're probably gonna get a publication out of it. But sometimes making those revisions is just super tedious and really annoying. When you stay silent through the whole Zoom meeting, but you say thanks everyone at the end to make it seem you contributed. 
I've done that before. Guilty as charged. Sometimes when I'm feeling like my research doesn't matter, I read my spam emails. In my spam emails, I am prominent and eminent. My submissions are urgently needed. I am invited to serve as a keynote speaker at conferences and fields like plant ecology and marine biology. <laughs> oh, I love this one. I get those emails all the time. Oh my goodness. After joining grad school, I actually like crying sometimes. It feels good. It does. Hey, if you need to cry because you got rejected from this journal, you go do that. I feel better after I cry. I wrote a little song about grad school. It goes, ah. Can be stressful, can be frustrating, can be disappointing, all those things, okay? But it can also be rewarding. Using etc. because there are too many examples. Using etc. because you don't know any more examples. Yes. I like it. I like it. Perhaps the best one-liner in a student paper this semester. The analysis is severely limited by my lack of understanding of what I'm doing. Hashtag humility. Yes. That is a very good way and nice way of saying that you really don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I like it. My committee members, when they roast me for something during my defense that they could have addressed literally any time beforehand. <laughs> well, sometimes they come up with a, uh, a new question, right? Maybe beforehand they didn't come up with the question and now they're like, oh, what about this? Have you thought about this? But yeah, from the from the student's perspective, oh my goodness, like why? Why did you have to like bring this question up now? You know, and while I'm defending in front of everybody, submitting an essay like, I can also relate to this because sometimes, you know, you work on these essays. I mean, you've spent so much time editing and rewriting certain parts. You know, like uh, you will spend hours just working on one section of the essay. And by the end of it, you just hate your own essay. Like I know this from experience. Like I remember I worked on this paper for so long and I presented it at like four to six different conferences. And then by the end of it, I'm just like, I really don't care. I really don't want to work on this anymore. I want this to be done with. My skills include reading an entire page of an academic text without absorbing a single word. I can also relate to that. Sometimes you are just so tired and even though you read an entire page, you don't understand what that page was about. Also, it's, it's not entirely our fault, right? Because oftentimes academic writing is quite technical. You know, so even though you understand every single word in that on that page, you don't really it's kind of hard to put together what what it means. PDF becomes fourth most popular religion. How do I convert to Judaism, Islam, Catholicism, PDF? That's useful. I've done that before, too. My professional writing style. When I start talking. <laughs> the Tiger King. <laughs> This is probably my favorite one so far. <laughs> when I write, I think I write pretty eloquently, you know? And when I write my papers, it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. But once I have to actually talk about it orally, I say, um, I say like, there are ginormous pauses when I speak. I just, I just sound like an idiot when I talk. There's free food in the lobby. Grad students. <laughs> Totally true, okay? This is so true. Anytime that I heard that there was free food somewhere in the department, I would immediately go there, okay? Immediately. And I would text all my friends, all my grad school friends. I'd be like, hey, there's free food in the department or there's free food in the lounge. And we would like all go. Because you know what? Grad students are poor. I mean, the stipends, I mean, if you're lucky, you get into a program that gives you a stipend, okay? But when you get these stipends, I mean, these stipends are not very much. I mean, they're enough to live on, but I mean, it, it, it's it's just enough to live on, okay? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun making it. For those of you who are in grad school, I'm sure you can relate to many of these memes. If you like seeing this content, I'm glad because I know I talk a lot about serious issues on my channel. And sometimes we really do need a break. We really do need a laugh. So. If you want to continue watching my videos, please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.